Hello and welcome to Hopeful Christian. My name is Mike and I'm so glad you stopped by. On this channel, we share God's message through prayer videos, gospel readings, and sermons. My goal is to provide a space for believers to connect with God and find hope and encouragement in their faith journey. As a follower of Jesus, I believe that His love and grace can bring healing and transformation to any situation. That's why I'm passionate about sharing His message with others and helping people grow closer to Him through prayer and meditation on His Word. If you're looking for a place to find inspiration and support in your walk with God, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel to stay updated on all the latest videos and join our community of believers who are seeking to grow closer to God. I hope that you'll find something here that speaks to your heart and helps you on your journey. And now, without further ado, let's get to the video. Dear brothers and sisters, today's Gospel reading is one that is very popular and well-known among many Orthodox Christians and other people throughout the world. Here in Baltimore, we have a hospital named after today's Gospel, the Good Samaritan. In today's Gospel reading from St. Luke, we hear about this lawyer coming to Jesus Christ and only in St. Luke's Gospel does Jesus bring about the parable of the Good Samaritan. In Mark's and Matthew's Gospels, young rich men approach Jesus with this very same question as today's lawyer, and the question that the lawyer posed. He posed a question to tempt him, to trick him, to test him, to see what Jesus would answer. But Jesus, instead of rebuking him for tempting, instead gives this question a certain sense of legitimacy by answering it. The lawyer asked, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asked him, Well, what do you know from the law, from Scripture? And the lawyer goes on to say that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. In today's Gospel reading, we also are called to bring attention to exactly who is our neighbor with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Not someone who is maybe dear to us, but someone who may be a stranger. But let us draw our attention today to the very first verse of today's Gospel reading. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? We look at the scripture, brothers and sisters, and we read about the Ten Commandments and we read how all the commandments tell us what not to do. Not to have any other gods. Not to take the Lord's name in vain. Not to forget the Sabbath. Not to kill. Not to commit adultery. Not to give false witness. Not to steal. All these things we are not to do. But Jesus says in this gospel reading we hear that all of that is based on action, not in action. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? We become very sensitive, brothers and sisters, to our actions, to our thoughts. We try to avoid certain actions and certain deeds. We try to keep these commandments, but they become difficult for us to follow if we focus on what not to do. They become easier if we focus on what we should do. This question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The lawyer was thinking about what he needs to do, but also about eternal life. How often do we think about eternal life? Especially now, during this Christmas fast, the Nativity fast, which begins today, and all the temptations that we have to try to navigate through. All the Christmas parties, all of the shopping, all of the stress, all of the materialism that this season brings in our society. Oddly enough, Christmas the incarnation of Christ through our material society brings us to think more about material things than spirituality. This fast, we think more about what to buy, what to wear, where to go, rather than eternal life. Because Christ came into this world for the sake of bringing us into eternal life. Christ came into this world because the law and the prophets and all the sacrifices offered before the coming of the Messiah were not enough. Eternal life really begins here. What is eternal life? Jesus says 
in John's Gospel, he says, This is eternal life, to know God, the Heavenly Father, to know Him, not to know Him like an object of our knowledge, but to know Him like we know things when we read a book, but to know Him like we know each other. We don't know each other through reading, through studying. We know each other through interaction, through love, through concern, through relationship. And we are to know God in a vibrant and living relationship. St. Paul calls us to pray unceasingly and give thanks without end. In other words, call to mind always God. Call to mind always eternal life. And if eternal life is to know God, the Heavenly Father, then eternal life begins here. It doesn't begin when we're taken to the cemetery. It begins here when we're baptized. We are forgiven all the sins. We are released from the bonds of death. And we are given the Holy Spirit so that we may commune with God. In the Orthodox Church, immediately after baptism, the infant or the newly illuminated person comes to partake of the Eucharist, the body and the blood of Christ communion, that by virtue of being given the Holy Spirit, we are granted that same communion that Adam and Eve had in paradise. And so, eternal life begins now. Eternal life starts now with our relationship with Christ, with God. And therefore, we are to always think about eternal life. We are always to long for a fuller and brighter and more joyous communion with God much more brighter and much more joyful than we could ever possibly have on this earth. And just as young men and women, when they are dating and longing to be with each other, longing to spend time with one another, longing to know each other more and more, we too are to be filled with that longing. In the Beatitudes, Christ blesses those who thirst and long after righteousness. And so, brothers and sisters, what are we to do, not do, but to do for eternal life? To love God and love our neighbor. And Christ shows us how to love. He shows us how to give of oneself. He sacrificed his life on the cross for our sake. And he says there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's neighbor, for one's friend. And so, we are not only to love our neighbor as ourself, as the blessed Theoplax of Bulgaria says in today's commentary, but more importantly, love our neighbor even more to the point of our own sacrifice, to the point of our own giving of oneself. So brothers and sisters, as we embark on today's Nativity Fast, let us think about what we are to do, actively do, for our eternal life, and let us always think about eternal life. Let us pray unceasingly, and by thinking about eternal life, we just don't contemplate it, but we long for it. We love God as a bride loves her groom with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. We are to dedicate and consecrate all of our energy, all of our strength, all of our being to love God. We were created to do just that. And if we don't do that, we become very unhappy we become very unfulfilled. We search out for all kinds of things that this world has to offer to bring us some kind of comfort, some kind of relief, some kind of fulfillment. We seek it through food, through drink, through material things, through wealth, to glory, to honor, to power, all kinds of things, and we walk away empty. Many of our friends go through this nativity fast feasting now. And when they come to the actual feast, they're exhausted. It's like it's over, thank goodness, but it just begins. It starts at nativity. We are to use this time not to think about earthly things, but during this fast, we are to think more and more about heavenly things, more and more about eternal life because it is for this sake that Christ comes into this world and takes flesh to give us eternal life. Let us not approach what Christ does for us as something passive, that we need to receive salvation, that we are to receive God's blessings, and indeed we do. But that's not enough. 
In answer, we are to love, we are to do, we are to give, we are to sacrifice. And in doing all of these things, we do it all in hopes of inheriting eternal life, all because we love. And just as a mother is willing to stay up all night to care for her child, and just as a young man is willing to do anything to court a beautiful girl out of love, so too we are to do anything and everything we can because of our love for God. Because all of that, what He has done for us, we come to appreciate more and more and want to answer back with love, with loving Him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, with all of our being. And likewise, to love our neighbor as our son. We are to act and pursue and strive for salvation. Let us, brothers and sisters, begin this nativity fast today by striving for greater faith, striving to grow in our love, striving to increase our prayers, striving to increase our fasting, striving to forgive and to help and to have mercy on others more and more. All of that so that we may inherit eternal